For the best value in domain names, look no further than Namecheap, where you could get domains for as low as $3.98, plus get one year of Who Is Guard privacy protection for free. For more information, check out the affiliate link in the description area below. Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. During this holiday Christmas weekend, I won't be doing a live episode, as you could probably tell. And so I'm still going to be doing our weekly talk show. In this case, I'm going to be talking about Bright. Also going to be talking about iPhone slowdown. And then finally, Automotive Linux. And so let's start off with Bright. I did do a review on this, and it is a spoiler-free review. So if you want to see that, I'll be sure to put a card up there somewhere. But the reason I wanted to talk about this is basically where things are heading and also as people who are on the internet we rely a lot on what the internet is saying versus what critics and other media outlets are saying okay so case in point this movie bright david ayer will smith joe egerton got pretty uh, horrible reviews from the critics got a 31 percent of rotten tomatoes 6.7 on imdb many of them calling it one of the worst movies of the year made by algorithms just not good things at all you know you could go here but there's something that's consistent throughout all of them the critics are giving it absolutely horrible reviews but the actual audience uh, people like you and me gave it pretty high reviews 91 percent here and then if you go to imdb and you actually go look at the reviews a lot of them are saying kind of like the same things where the critics are wrong and the majority of ratings are positive and high. And then even if you go to Netflix itself and you actually look at reviews or ratings from actual people who are on Netflix and watching it, they are pretty much high as well. Most of it would be five stars. I left a five star as well. And so what this shows you is something that I think a lot of people have known for a long time but with the internet it just really you know makes it a much bigger thing where critics are going to be critics and you don't have to agree with them or you could disagree with them it just really matters on what you think about it and the majority of times people on the internet are pretty much spot on with what's actually going on out in the real world and not in the critical world and so a lot of times people will look to actual users who actually watch a product, review a product. So this can go for anything from movies, books, music, you name it. More and more, since we do have the internet, we rely on it as our main source of, I guess, reviews, our main source of validation on whether or not this is a good product or service and whether or not we should actually either view it, purchase it, or share it with other people and so that is something that is not going to change. Uh, it's been growing more and more uh, relying on the internet for things. And I think that's a great thing because whatever you have the internet with actual people who are reviewing this or talking about a product, there's a lot more, I would say, authenticity on this. Not to say that the people who are critics are any their uh, ideas or opinions are any less valid it's just that that's their job they are critics and so a lot of times whenever I see critic reviews I take that with a grain of salt in terms of that is their opinion of things but the ones that I rely more on are people on the internet specifically on YouTube and every now and then I'll go to other websites as well and so people like to have validation on their thoughts whether it's right or wrong but I myself, I really enjoyed Bright, and it was more of a fun movie for me than anything else. And I absolutely love the world that they built here, and I can't wait to see more. And so maybe this is something that has been blown out of proportion, I guess, through the media. But then again, it brings a lot of attention to this particular movie and also this whole subject of having actual real people reviews versus critical reviews. And so it'll be interesting to see where we're at in the future, especially with social media taking like the precedence a lot of times on what people think, whether it's good or bad on a particular subject or area. And so hopefully the critics will also take this into consideration um, because this is a pretty unanimous difference between that 
and the audience. And so sometimes I think like, well, there might be a conspiracy theory by the big movie companies to actually get the critics to all leave bad reviews okay so that's one conspiracy theory but at the end of the day it doesn't really matter all that matters is what you think and whether or not you enjoyed it and so like i said check it out it is a really fun time so the second thing i want to talk about is apple's old iphones getting slowed down by apple purposely and this has been a long-standing conspiracy theory and you know, here, Apple is in a lot of ways confirming it. And so the conspiracy is that Apple, like many other software technology manufacturers like Microsoft, push updates that actually slow down your actual hardware. Okay, so the whole term of that is plan obsolescence. Okay, but as usual, there's like two sides to every story. The one side is obviously from the marketing arm of the company. Okay, and Apple does it better than anybody else where they explain something and then the whole uh, I guess distortion minefield or whatever they call it takes place and people suddenly agree with what Apple says in this case Apple is saying they put this out there because they didn't want to affect the battery life the old batteries on there they didn't want phones to suddenly turn off but the caveat is that your phone slows down so in a lot of cases it's pretty much unusable okay and i'm not an iphone user so i'm not sure if you can actually reject um, updates from apple uh, so i'm not sure if you could do that but this is where it gets in between the whole line of plan obsolescence and then an actual upgrade that you need okay so hardware as you know over time it's going to be get old you know, and this software is not meant for older hardware. And so in that case, it makes sense for you to have the latest and greatest software, specifically when it comes to security. However, I also feel that since the owner actually paid for the hardware itself, then they should have the option to upgrade, you know. And if a lot of people are complaining, then I'm assuming a lot of these upgrades are eventually forced. And so if people decide that they do not want to upgrade for whatever reason, especially for performance issues, then they should have that option not to. Instead of being put in a situation where the performance is so slow that they have to get a new phone. And the whole idea of it really taxing the battery is kind of moot at that point. Okay. And so, yeah, I really think that in a lot of ways, this is a little bit of both. I mean, manufacturers... Uh, you know, they do put in things in place where they do want you to upgrade. You know, they want you to upgrade every single year, uh, whether it's hardware, whether it's software or both, you know. And most of the times, the best way for companies to actually force you to upgrade is by using software. That's the easiest way. And so if you think about all your old phones that you have, even though they have slowed down, I don't think they get to the point where they're unusable if you're using the existing version of the software that came with it. Now, some people would argue that you shouldn't have an old version, but I've experienced this myself even on my Android phones. So every time I get an update, over time, it just slows down the phone worse and worse. Uh, this ha has happened with pretty much all my Android phones, except for my Motorola G phones, which actually has pretty much stock Android. Okay, those are the ones that don't slow down. But things like my LG G5 and my HTC One, all of them have slowed down over time. And the thing is, the software, it shouldn't make that much of a difference because these phones are pretty powerful and they're really not introducing anything new. And since I do have a Motorola G4 right here, or G, the first one, the first generation, this one still runs really fast with the actual old software itself. And so I purposely did not upgrade the software. And so that is a real world test in that if you have the old software and if you're okay with not getting the latest security updates and so forth, then it runs really good on the old software. Whereas when I upgraded my software, such as with the LG G5, which much more powerful hardware, it actually slows it down. And there have been many times where this actually runs faster. Okay, despite the whole resolution and stuff, it shouldn't run that much faster than this, but it does. And so I really think there is a lot of, I guess, support or backing 
to you know support the case that manufacturers are purposely uh, putting planned obsolescence on your hardware okay and there's other people who agree with that and so there are some people who are actually suing Apple for slowing down older phones okay and um, honestly I don't think they're gonna win and if they do win you know they'll probably get a small amount which means absolutely nothing to Apple and so yeah so I think optimally the best way that you can keep these upgrades were coming if possible is to have some stock version of the software and hopefully when we do get a Linux phone which is coming out that we will have more control just as we do on our desktop on whether or not upgrades come in or which upgrades come in and so those are my thoughts on that and I really don't like the fact that this is happening to a lot of people because if you are a geek then usually you could figure out ways to get around this or you could either you know jailbreak your phone or you could root your Android device and put a stock version of it or whatever version you want but the majority of people are not gonna do that or they won't know how to do that and so well hopefully uh, they resolve this uh, but I don't think they will okay and so let's go ahead and get into the last bit which is also uh, one of the favorite parts of every single episode is Linux based news now I have talked about a few episodes ago about artificial intelligence and also how Linux is a part of that the open source AI and as a matter of fact everybody knows that Linux is pretty much everywhere and it is in every single type of category that you can think of and the one place that I don't think we think about too much now is the automotive landscape which is absolutely huge you know if you think about things like Android you know they have Android OS in a lot of cars but a lot of the automotive software that's there in cars they do run on the Linux kernel okay and so that is something that I think a lot of people do not know about or that, that they even think about and that's a huge space for other companies to try to get in if you look at Apple they're definitely trying to get in there to have a lot of their software in cars Microsoft is definitely trying to get in there and that is the next level I think of where this software war is going the operating system software war is in automotive and also other type of transportation such as trucks boats planes you name it you know trains it, it's just everywhere and so this is a huge huge market and then when you couple that with artificial intelligence and also self-driving cars you could see that this is a huge huge area and the thing is both of these areas is largely supported and I think even started by the whole Linux Foundation so the Linux Foundation is doing a lot of amazing things and um, I can't wait to see what comes out of this whole open source automotive grade Linux and obviously not everything's gonna be open source because of the simple fact that you know companies are going to want some things to be proprietary as well for many reasons from security to business to whatever reasons that they have but the great thing is we're also going to be able to get hopefully open source based versions of this to where it's very similar like the open source AI where we can use this for whatever in this case big devices that we want and so this is a really interesting thing and more and more as we're seeing where the future is heading the future is Linux you know the Linux kernel combined with the GNU uh, for the actual operating system as a whole this is something that is going to be even way beyond what we're used to with Linux specifically thinking about it being on web servers or supercomputers okay Linux is everywhere but in this case it's making the next big step in really big big categories and another category that I think a lot of us have forgotten as well is in entertainment in terms of televisions and stuff you know Android is on some televisions but also a lot of the web OS all these other software there's a huge market market there and a lot of these smart TVs they probably have the Linux kernel in them as well and so this is going to be an exciting area for Linux to get into among many others so I'm really interested to see what companies do with this and I'm also more interested where this new I guess platform war is gonna come out I could easily see there being automotive 
OS fanboys and fangirls out there, just like we have in every other space, whether it's desktop, mobile, you name it. There's always going to be those flame wars, and it's just going to be fun. And so what are your thoughts on everything that I've talked about today, whether it's the Bright movie, whether it is Apple slowing down your iPhones, or whether it's automotive Linux? Leave your comments in the area below. And I know this is not the same as us having our live episode, but I'll be back the very next week. And so for all of you out there around the world who are enjoying your holidays, enjoy it, be safe, and we'll see you on another live episode. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, Head over to geekoutdoors.com and I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.